Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Oh, it's so beautiful out walking at night, isn't it, David? Mm Mm-hmm, it's a nice night. It's a brilliant idea of yours to take this walk. I'm so sleepy, I'll go right to sleep. The air's pretty cold. I should think you'd feel all fresh and awake. I do now, but once I get into the warm house, my eyes will close like Venetian blinds. I'll get as <laughs> sleepy as a kitten. You draw a very pretty picture of yourself. Look at our house, David. If you were a stranger walking through the woods, wouldn't that house lure you like a castle in a fairy tale? If I were cold and hungry and lost, it would look like heaven. With a mortgage. Well, I'm not cold, and I'm not hungry, and I'm not lost, and it looks like heaven to me. Oh, darling, what a wonderful night. We'll dream such wonderful dreams. Mm, It's only about ten o'clock. Well, that's late for going to sleep early. Say, David, you hear something? Huh? What'd you say? I thought I heard our telephone ringing. I think you're right. I think that's our telephone. We better hurry. Hey, careful how you run. You'll break your ankle. Ground's very rough. Won't keep ringing forever, David. Hurry! They'll call back if we miss them. Oh, I couldn't bear it. Who do you suppose? It's still ringing. Say, you didn't lock the door, did you, David? No, no, it's open. Oh, please, please, don't stop ringing. Please be patient. Here we come. It stopped ringing. Oh, it hasn't. No, it's just catching its breath. Do you want to get it? Yeah, I'm right here. It has stopped ringing. David, don't keep saying that. Hello? 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 Stop shouting. That won't help. I said the phone has stopped ringing. Couldn't have. Hello? All right, go on saying hello if you like, but nobody hears you except me. Oh, I can't bear it. You just have to bear it. David, it's awful. It's like like having a ghost in the house and not knowing its name. Who do you suppose telephone is at 10 o'clock at night? Hmm? Could be a number of people. Don't say that. You're making it worse. Oh, come on. Let's go to bed. To bed when the telephone might ring any minute? I couldn't sleep a wink. Well, what do you propose to do? I propose to wait up for its ring. Whoever it was who called might not call back. Oh, they're bound to call back. Yeah? What makes you so sure? Well, when I call somebody up and they don't answer, I call again. It just so happens it's not you on the other end. Well, I'm not so different from other people. I figure the person is in the bathtub or in the kitchen or outside or something, so I call back. Oh, you don't make any sense. I understand what I'm saying perfectly. I doubt it. David, take off your coat. You'll catch cold standing around in mm, You'll catch cold standing around in yours, I'm too. I'm taking mine off, too. Who do you suppose it was? Oh, do I have to go through this until the telephone rings again? Aren't you curious at all? No. I'm going to bed. Then go to bed. I'll wait up alone. And be awakened by you, I should say not. But I'm not going to wait for that phone to ring more than ten minutes. We won't have to. Mm, you sure of that? Positive. I wonder who it was. No, no. Tell you what I'll do. I'll, I'll make a bargain with you. I'll wait ten minutes, exactly ten minutes. But I am not going to wonder who it was. Julia, maybe. No, not Julia. Roger Killian? No, no. He wouldn't call at ten o'clock. You see, Mama's upstairs sleeping, so it can't be her. Thank goodness, or I'd be worried. Claudia, there are eight million people who live in New York City alone. Five thousand right here in Eastbrook. Now, you're not going to guess who it, who it is out of all that number Honestly, of people. Honestly, you make it so complicated, David. I don't know all those people. I know only a very few. Oh, why doesn't it ring? I think I'll have a glass of milk. This is sheer madness. You'll be up until tomorrow morning. You are behaving just like a man. How do you expect me to behave? It rang. David, it rang the telephone. The power of suggestion. Hello? Hello, is this Eastbrook 276, ring three? Who is it? Yes, that's our number. David, it's long distance. It's probably New York. One moment, please. San Francisco is calling. San Francisco? San Francisco? Yeah. You sure you understood correctly? Sure, I'm sure I understood correctly. She said San Francisco is calling. Who do we know in San Francisco? Mm-hmm. We don't know anybody in San Francisco. We must know somebody in San Francisco because that somebody is calling us up. It's only 7 o'clock in San Francisco. There's a three-hour time difference. Mm, that makes it uh, 10 o'clock here. Brilliant. Well, then how did you know it was 7 o'clock in San Francisco? One moment, please. We're waiting, operator. Who is it? Well, then it's, it's not in the middle of the night for whoever's calling us. It's only seven. I can't imagine who it is. Well, we'll soon find out. 
Aren't you glad we're still not out walking? I'm not so sure. East Brook 276 Ring 3. Right here. The who party is that is calling you does not answer. Who, who is the party that's calling me, please? I'll ring them again and call you back. Please, operator, who was Thank it? Thank you for waiting. Operator, operator, don't hang up. She hung up, David. Well, now what? The party that was ringing us didn't answer. How come? How do I know how come? The operator didn't tell me how come. She doesn't know how come either. Such a business. I am going to bed. You can't go to bed just like that. Who says I can't? I says you can't. You have to wait up for me with the, for the operator to call back. She may not call back for hours. That's what you said last time, and it was only five minutes. Sit down, David. Sit down. Smoke your pipe. Oh, be patient. I don't want to be patient. I don't want to smoke my pipe. I want to go to bed. I'm sleepy. One minute ago, you were uh, sleepy. I'm sleepy now. Has the man got a right to be sleepy if he wants to be? Who do you suppose it is? You're starting to repeat yourself. I've never known anybody from California, let alone from San Francisco. And why is it three hours sooner now than it is here later? Now. Because the earth is round. I don't see that that has anything to do with anything. Do you know anybody from San Francisco? Not as I can think of offhand. I know a lot of people in New York that might be in San Francisco. Though. Really? You never told me who? Anybody. Well, who is anybody? You must have somebody in mind. I had to open my mouth. Anyway, why is it three hours sooner? I wish it were seven o'clock here. We'd be eating dinner. That strawberry shortcake was delicious. Mm. We'd have the whole evening ahead. I'd just as leave have it behind me. Wondering about a ringing telephone. There lies the way to madness. Well, personally, when you consider it, San Francisco calling us, there's no wonder we're having little trouble getting together. We're thousands of miles apart. We're not even at the same time. You can't expect to just snap your fingers and conquer distance and time, can you? You certainly can. The telephone is a miraculous invention. I wonder what it's like talking to San Francisco. Like talking to the next room. When was the last time you talked to the next room? Did you have anything interesting to say? You talk more nonsense. Well, I didn't say I talked to the next room. You did. California, San Francisco. I am sleepy. David, please concentrate. Who do we know in San Francisco? Oh, Roger's wife telephoned from St. Louis the other day. Maybe she's in San Francisco Could now. be. She's always going someplace. Could she have gotten there already from St. Louis? That was almost a week ago. Then she wouldn't be there still. She never stays any place a week. By the size of which, why would she telephone us in the first place? Or in the second place. David, maybe it's an order for you to design a building or something. Oh, sure. Sight unseen. Couldn't it be? What? Well, somebody who's heard what a wonderful architect you are and wants you to go out there and build something. They do a lot of building in San Francisco. Uh, what makes you say that? Oh, I'm always seeing pictures of houses. Luxurious homes with grapefruits. I don't build luxurious homes with grapefruits. Might be amusing, but it's not my kind of architecture. I know, darling, but maybe not everybody else knows that you have so many principles. San Francisco, I'm busting to know who it is. Well, don't bust or you'll never find out. I don't understand you at all. Yeah, what's so odd about me? You don't have any bump of curiosity whatsoever. You're so blasé. I am older than you. Well, are. not that much old. Do you think we ought to wake up Mama? Why on earth wake up Mama? Well, maybe, maybe, maybe somebody she knows telephoning. Uh -huh. Wait and see who it is first. Oh, then it'll take time to run upstairs and wake up Mama and take her downstairs. It really will cost money. Well, now stop worrying about it. It's not a collect call. Wouldn't it be a terrible trick to play on somebody? Collect call from the other part of the world. Very funny, yes. Maybe Mama has some kind of relative out in California I don't know about. Unlikely. Well, I guess I might as well smoke my pipe and settle down for a good long wait. I realize there is no hope in budging you until that call comes through, handing the matches. Mm. I should have known this thing would happen sooner or later. Well, at least it's not later than 10 o'clock. We have that much to be grateful for. Just look at that black instrument sitting there staring me right in the eye. It's a demon. <laughs> Careful, you'll be hypnotized. Is there room on that chair for two? There is not. Good. Push over. Claudia, my trousers were pressed just this afternoon. Shut up. I'll put another crease in them. Oh. Now, I'm not that heavy. <laughs> Don't make such faces. Oh, this is cozy. Well, the vigil. We are two oversized dopes. Sitting here waiting for the phone to ring when it should be asleep. Such a nice walk. What a shame to waste it now on sitting around in the living room. 
Oh, well, San Francisco doesn't call every night. Thank heavens for little favors. No, it must be something terribly important. Maybe it's a matter of life and death. Mm. Your imagination is running away Maybe with Maybe because we weren't here when that phone rang the first time. Maybe something terrible is going to happen to somebody or other. Are, are you serious? Maybe a whole mystery revolves on this one phone call. Maybe we... Maybe you've been seeing too many bad movies lately. Well, those things happen, don't they? Mm. Not to us. We're just ordinary folk. Nothing like that ever happens to us. Well, something happened to us tonight. Out of the clear blue, the telephone rang. I'm hearing ghosts. Well, answer it, for heaven's sake, b- before it hangs up. It's psychic. It heard me say it rang. Here I come. Hello. Is this Eastbrook 276, ring three? Yes, it is. Please put San Francisco on. We're waiting. Who is it? Soon find out. Eastbrook 276, ring three. You are the wrong number. What? We're sorry to have disturbed you. You are the wrong number. Your line is clear. Oh, no. No, that can't be. Claudia, Claudia, what's the matter? What's happened? That is a rank injustice, David. It's absolutely prejudice. That's what it is. Well, what is it, darling? We're the wrong number. What? Nobody wanted us at all. Oh, I I might have known. Sue, the telephone company, that's what I'll do. Well, that would be a great help. Honestly, such a thing had to happen to me. David, I'm so disappointed. Then come on upstairs. By tomorrow, you won't remember what you were disappointed about. Yep, coming. I'll turn out the light and forget about the whole business. Oh, I've forgotten about the whole business already. It's a lovely walk, wasn't it, darling? Mm -hmm. Nice, brisk. As I said before, I am sleepy. So am I. Mm. David. What do you suppose somebody was calling somebody else from San Francisco about? This time I'll take it. What has God wrought? When you find yourself entertaining an unexpected guest, you're mighty glad you remembered to put plenty of Coke on ice. For those frosty bottles of Coca-Cola, sparkling and refreshing and delicious have a way of turning a simple get-together into an event. Ask for Coke when you shop today. It's nice to have a supply on hand. Hey, Joe, uh, hold on a minute, would you? Certainly, David. What's up? Has, um, has that ever happened to you? A wrong number? Mm-hmm. Yes, I'm afraid it has. Well, you know, it's just one of those, uh, well, machine-age foibles. Uh, uh, I am so sleepy. Mm. Well... I guess I'd better lock up and get to bed. Hmm? And a good night's sleep to you, David. Uh, you'll be glad you had it tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow's another day. It always is. But uh, what else about tomorrow? Come now, I don't have to tell you. Tomorrow, your household increases by one. Oh, the cow. That's right. She moves in tomorrow. It's the big day. Yeah, hallelujah. Get yourself some sleep, Joe. I will. As I was about to say... Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. These broadcasts are adapted for radio by Manya Starr, and the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.